Hi, welcome to this video presentation and demonstration on CI-CD with Ansible Tower and GitHub. My name is Keith Tenzer. I've got 20 plus years of experience as an operator, developer, architect, and inventor. I have a blog at keithtenzer.com and I've been at Red Hat since 2015 as a principal solutions architect. Now you might be thinking, CI-CD, no Jenkins, you must be crazy. You're insane. I don't want to even listen anymore to what you're going to say because it's just going to be garbage. I assure you it's not. And the point here is not to say we don't need Jenkins, um, but to look at potentially a much simpler workflow involving Ansible Tower, which is a platform for Ansible, puts an API and lots of RBAC and lots of capabilities in front of Ansible and basically connecting to GitHub. And so that's what we're going to be doing. And in this case, we're retiring our dear old butler, Jenkins, who's obviously served us well for so many years, but may no longer be needed. So let's check it out and see what it looks like a world without Jenkins. First, the solution architecture to give an idea of the big picture here. On the left, we have a developer and I'm going to, in the demo, go through this workflow. He's going to check out a feature branch, make a code change, um, do a pull request to GitHub. Uh, that's going to trigger a webhook to Ansible Tower, which then spawns basically a workflow. A workflow in Ansible Tower is just a series of job templates, which, and each job template is basically a playbook. And each playbook, of course, consists of a series of, of, of tasks um, that we're performing. In this case, we have four different kinds of job templates or playbooks, uh, sorry, four different you have four different types um, and, and they're divided into two different groups. So we have the ones in red, which are owned by operations or infrastructure and the one in blue, which is owned by DevOps. So already we see that Tower really brings these worlds together. Jenkins can never do that. So infrastructure operations folks never really use Jenkins. Um, and here um, they can do that and, and, and we can bring these worlds together. So that's one of the advantages. We'll see some others. Basically the process is we provision our infrastructure, we inventory it obviously because we just built it, so we need to know IPs and things like that to get to it. Then we execute the developer playbooks, which are going to basically build the application, run unit tests and acceptance tests, and then clean it up and of course report back to GitHub uh, the status and that pull request that was issued if it was successful or failed or something else. And then our lady on the right, Cheeks can do a code review and potentially merge that code to the master branch. So let's take a look at this under the hood. The first thing I'm going to go to is Ansible Tower and show how we've got this set up. So in Ansible Tower, we've got a couple projects. We have um, our Go Hello World project. This is actually where the source code is for our Go application. It's also though where the playbooks are to do that third step, which is building it and doing acceptance tests, unit tests. Um, that's being provided by the developers. Um, then we have Paz and Yaz playbooks uh, or a GitHub repository with those playbooks. And that's owned by the infrastructure ops guys. And they're providing playbooks to provision infrastructure, deprovision, inventory, all that good stuff. And the beauty here is that they can use those same playbooks that they're using for other things, potentially other developer groups, or even people that are just, you know, need to consume, um, you know, IT services uh, easily and dynamically. So there's a huge degree of reusability that we would never even get close to with, with, with Jenkins. So that's a really, uh, a really beautiful thing in my opinion. Uh, and this all comes together then. So we're pulling playbooks from both of these repositories and templates. So we create job templates in this case to provision a Fedora, remove it, do our go build. And we bring that together in what I, what I referred to before as a workflow. So what we're triggering is this go CI CD workflow, which, basically maps to our, um, in our solutions architecture, those four kind of steps or pillars. We provision, in this case, Fedora. We do an inventory, in this case, on the development environment. We do our go build acceptance test, and then we clean it all up and report back to GitHub. Uh, so from GitHub, what we're executing is basically this, uh, this, this, this workflow, uh, this workflow here. Um, if I go now into, uh, into GitHub, I can actually see this go out Go Hello World application. You can see the co source code here is under source hello. Under Ansible though, I have basically my playbook and a role for, for doing this Go build, again, provided by the developers. Um, so it's isolated and they're providing that. Um, as well as I've configured the webhook, as you can see. So anytime uh, code is pushed into this repository, it's going to trigger a webhook and send information, a payload um, 
to Ansible Tower. Um, you can see 46.4207248, which is the same IP here. That's no coincidence. <laughs> that's, that's Tower. So it's sending the webhook there where it's going to kick off that workflow that I just showed you. So let's put on our development hat and, uh, and give, this, give this a go. So I'm going to look at Git branch. I'm on my local desktop now. You can see I'm working in a big branch called Patch1. I'm going to go to my IDE here, and I'm just going to introduce some broken, something that's going to break the build, basically. So I'm creating a syntax error here. Um, obviously, the IDE even flags it and knows that that's not something that we should have there. Uh, I can now see that this file was, in fact, modified. I can commit it uh, locally. Uh, just call it broken code. Give it a commit message. Um, and then I can push um, to my GitHub repository as uh, the feature branch. So I'm pushing this code into that uh, feature branch. So off it goes. It just did that and did the push. Now if I go back to Tower, um, I can go to my jobs. You can see here it's working over there because it just got the webhook to obviously spawn uh, that workflow. So it spawns the workflow job you see here, go CICD workflow. And of course the first thing it's going to do is do an SCM update um, and, um, and provision the infrastructure. So it's going to um, it's going to update the code because, again, that Ansible code could have changed. We need that for the provisioning process, so that happens dynamically. Then it's going to go on to provision Fedora, uh, if, in this case a VM, which is running in my cloud, which is running on OpenStack, but this could be AWS or Azure or GCP or something locally. You can see here, basically, it just launched uh, this, this, this instance here called Go Builder. You can give it a name. Um, and so now we have that VM. And now it's going to inventory it, um, and you know, because it needs to detect obviously IP addresses, uh, things like that, so we can actually, you know, go to it. And now we're going to execute the playbook from the developers, which is, I think, the interesting one here. Um, it's going to actually wait for the system to come up and um, and 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 then go in uh, and start uh, and start executing the the, the CI workflow. Uh, essentially. So you can see it made a connection. Now the first thing it's doing is installing uh, Golang. That takes a little while so um, to install. So while we're doing that, why don't we go back to our, um, our Hello World application. You can see now we have an additional branch. Um, so what I can do in this branch is I can basically do a pull request against this um, to create the pull request. This doesn't push code, it just creates a request. And now you can see here that um, this is yellow and it's continuous integration, go hello world, pending Ansible Tower. So, um, and if I click here, it'll actually bring me to, t to Ansible Tower um, and you can see it's pending. So we've, um, Tower has automatically updated that um, to do that. Um, in this case, what you're seeing here also is I have another CI CD um, workflow for something else I'm doing. So that's kicking off as well, but this is basically the one we're, we're interested in uh, and it's gonna go off now and, and, and wait until it hears back uh, on what happened with uh, with those tests. So let's go back um, to, um, to to the workflow. It's still installing Golang. That's fine. While we're waiting, we can actually look at the webhooks. Um, I showed you that before. So when we send the request, I think it's kind of interesting. Um, Git actually sends a payload. Uh, and how we're able to know like what branch we're using is because this all this information gets sent to Tower. Um, and so basically the, the, the branch here um, is important. Um, also the ID, we need this. Otherwise we can't update the status of the pull request um, as well as you know <clears throat> who's the committer and that kind of thing uh, is very important. So now we go through back to our, um, back to our Go um, build. You can see it basically finished and installed Golang. It created a source directory, it downloaded dependencies, installed them, and then it went to build the application and it failed. Undefined, broken, right? Because we put that thing in there. So basically that failed. Um, and so now if we go back here, we can go back to um, we can go back to uh, our, our pull request here um, and we can see here in the pull request that it failed. Basically, all checks have failed, right? So what we want to do is we want to go back and uh, fix that. So what we can do is now as a developer, uh, bring up my ID again. I'm just going to change this um, there. So it's not, so it's fixed now. So I, I fixed this issue. I can go back here, minus S. 
and we can see we changed something. So I'm going to commit it now. Fix code. And we can go git push origin patch dash one. And off it's going to go. And this is going to then execute our um, CI CD process again. Now, the nice thing here is um, also, you know, we never got to clean up. So our instance actually still is still there. I mean, you, you, we could have cleaned it up if we wanted to, but um, in this case, we're not. We're leaving it. We're leaving it there because the idea is probably the developer is going to, you know, um, want to fix their code and, and change things. So until that workflow completes. But again, you could also um, make that um, behave differently if you wanted to. So um, now I'm going to go into Tower here. And we can see basically here, um, it kicked off already the jobs. So it's already um, doing kicking off the, the workflow here. And it's just started the, the build again. So we can go look at that. Um, again, it's, it's going to wait um, for connectivity. There's a timeout on that. So it takes a little bit um, for the instance to come up. And um, then this time it should go once it connects a lot faster because it's already installed um, basically you know, the system's already there. So it already went through these steps. Of course, when we, you know, when we build software components, you know, there's a lot of artifacts left over and can take really long to build stuff like builds can take hours. So this is actually really cool because the stuff's already there. We basically with Ansible just left off where we did before. And we left off, we left off at, um, at the uh, build, which you can see here is successfully now completed. Then we actually start the web service. Um, and we actually, um, uh, uh, ping the web service. Actually, we do a, uh, a request against it uh, to test an acceptance test, and then we kill the web service. Um, so you can actually see here um, uh, in in here. Uh, whoops, not that one. Um, this one, the test the web service. Um, you can see basically, I did a, a a post against status, and it returns hello world, and that's what basically I'm looking for. So that's how I did my acceptance test. Um, and then, of course, if we go back to jobs we'll see here um, that it removed the instance, right? So once it successfully ran, it removed the instance. Now, if I go back um, to my infrastructure platform, which I need to log into again, uh, that, that VM in OpenStack uh, should no longer be there. So again, it's gone, so everything cleaned up. And now, um, as a last step, if I go back to GitHub, uh, I can actually see here now um, in my request that all the checks have passed, right? So I can actually merge this. So now I'm that, um, of course, do a code review potentially before I merge it, but now I'm the lady in our, our diagram that's coming in and I can basically say, confirm merge and off I go, done. And of course, now what's gonna happen in this case, um, since I just merged to master, it's going to kick off uh, this pipeline uh, again, because now that we move the code to master, there may be other components in master that need to be tested or what have you. Um, and I'm not going to wait for all this to finish, but you can see basically those those pipelines go uh, get started again uh, there. So basically, that should give you an idea of how this works. Um, hopefully, it was interesting. I thank you for your time and attention. And if you're interested further, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much.